you know, I, it's rare that you see people who have actually learned the trade properly. You know, sometimes, you know, fighters today are fast-tracked. So, so they're not given the time to learn their craft. You know, they go into world championship fights when they are still uh, in, in secondary school. You know, not even in college. And they're being put into uh, uh, university. Are you with me? It takes time to learn this, this craft, this art. You know, it takes uh, humility to actually listen to your elders and follow the, the rules of the life you have to live. Because you can't shortcut it. You cannot shortcut it. And, uh, you know, these principles are very important for this reason. Your health is on the line. You will get damaged. You know, you know, you know, all you boxing fans out there, you know, you are looking at fighters and they are slurring, you know, and they are forgetful. Uh, and uh, uh, they end up, a lot of them end up falling away from their families. You know, it's a tragic sport, you know, even when you win, even when you become a champion, it's tragic because you become a standard bearer where people are looking up to you. Can you handle that? Can you handle that, that uh, responsibility? It's a great responsibility. And as I said, by Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And it is tough. You know, anyone who signs up to be a fighter, effectively, you sign up to a life of solitary confinement. You are alone, because people are following. They're watching what you do. It's a lonely life, it's tough. It's great if you can embrace it. But it's tough. You know, today, guys are looking at money. They're looking at bling. They're looking at, look at me. That's, uh, that has a sad ending. A beautiful ending is the one where, you know, we become mentors. We become servers of uh, the community. We protect and serve. We look after people. We teach chivalry. We teach kindness. We teach the fact that if if your youngster, if your young boy or girl gets damaged in the community, it's only a matter of chance that it wasn't mine. So that means we have to protect each other. So that's standard bearing. And uh, who better to do it than boxers who are tough? So uh, I don't quite remember how we got onto that, but no, I've, take, I've taken you through a philosophy yeah. there, which is, is what we are. You know, we're boxers, and it's a beautiful vocation. But again, yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. It must be used to look after, not to take advantage of. This, of course, all came from perspective from your own career, correct? Of course, yeah. Of course. yeah. With the, the younger fighters that are being pushed a little bit quicker or, or maybe achieving success really early on, um, you know, it could be a double-edged sword, like, like you mentioned. We saw with Mike Tyson, uh, self-destructed uh, um, with all that pressure, all that fame all at once. Um, Junior's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Yeah, you, you know, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Uh, you, you know, you, you never hear about him getting into trouble. He's not a troublemaker. Funny enough, yeah, I suppose I can take credit for that because you follow your father. Not that you are trying to be uh, the same, but you can't help but take on the mannerisms of your parents. So, you know, as a parent, all us parents, you know, our children are looking up to us and they don't realize it. And in actual fact, they become us. You know, my son will become me as much as he's trying to actually go the other way. You're going to become your father, as I became mine. And so, you know, we all have a responsibility uh, to be serviceful. Because that 
uh, way of being uh, harmonizes the community at large. What do you make of uh, recently, like recent fighters coming out of retirement? So with the exception of Floyd, because you know, when a master's a master, he's just a master. What are you going to say? Okay, let me strike that. When a man has genius, he just has genius, and he's a genius. You know, master is only for the eternal one. Okay. Tragically. You know, when a fighter comes back, with the exception of uh, our guy, Floyd, with the exception of him, they're coming, out, they're coming back for money. They're going back to the well, which is, which is why I am building a foundation to look after fighters so that they don't have to come back to that well. To do what? You know, to get more damage? Yeah. My brother, you know, has dementia, He's 57 years old. What did that? That's supposed to happen maybe when you're 86. At 57, it's boxing. Boxing is dangerous, but it's beautiful. Okay, so we have a responsibility. In fact, I'm glad you brought this up. You know, I would like to actually put out there the fact that perhaps organizations should give a percentage to a foundation that looks after uh, fighters who, because, because of our pride, we suffer in silence. We don't ask for help. You know, uh, you know, mental health is an issue with us. You know, getting hit is dangerous, which is why we, again, all admire, you know, Mr. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Why? Because effectively he has done what it said you were supposed to do on the tin. Hit and don't get hit. But not everybody has and is blessed with that type of skill set. You know, so, you know, we have a duty to have these organizations, the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, the WBO, the IBO, to perhaps give a percentage of uh, their uh, fees to a foundation that looks after fighters. We have to find these men who are now destitute. We have to find these men who are in trouble, who are suffering in silence. You know, so when you hear of these men making a comeback, again, with the exception of Floyd, you know, they are in desperate need. Okay, so let's, you know, let's not play this uh, game of uh, foolery. Oh, you know, he just wants to try it one more time. It's money. Okay, and, you know, we effectively deserve to be looked after because we have entertained you. Okay, at our cost. But we continue to suffer in silence because so many of us cannot speak our uh, realities and our truths and how things should be. You know, these managers, these promoters, these uh, even trainers, look after your fighter. You know, we need you to look after us because we are not capable. We can do what you can't do, which is we can fight, but we can't do what you can do. We can't account. You know, we can't budget, okay? We can't uh, go on reading and doing the normal things. We're not normal. We are uh, abnormal. You know, it's not about education. It's about the education of the art, which is about movement and grit and fortitude and, let's say, style, majesty, grace, uh, a grit. That's what we are about. So we need your help because we didn't do the normal thing academics, uh, budgeting. You know how hard budgeting is for me? My wife has to budget. Why? Because I came up, uh, I was reaching for that dream. You know, I didn't want to do the, you know, you gradually, gradually, gradually build, you work, you know, uh, everything uh, in moderation. You know, fighters are kind of black and white. Do or die. We don't do the gray. So, you know, we need your help. And I'm the first person to be speaking about this, which is so obvious. It's elusive that no one is actually helping us who we become uh, aged. And we are debilitated by uh, this craft of which is... It's 
tragic. Beautiful to look at, but it's tragic. The price is so heavy to pay. So we need your help. You know, we need looking after. You know, I speak on behalf of, uh, you know, my uh, compatriots. Yes. Oof. It's, just, it's a lot to take in, uh, Chris. Not going to lie. I, you know, I've personally seen a lot of the older fighters that, you know, are asking for money, are slurring, or they don't remember, or they're just a, a shell of, of what they are. And it's, uh, it's a heartbreaking thing to see. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, why isn't this being addressed? We've got to address it, man. You can't just look at these fighters who say they're coming back and think that, you know, and believe, you know, it's for the love of it. Money is an extremely hard, uh, can be an extremely hard thing to attain. Boxing makes it look easy. If I take a few shots, I can actually make some money. Well, yeah, but there's a price to pay for taking those shots. You know, we have bodies which, you know, may look 40, but in actual fact, through wear and tear, the body's 70. Knees are brittle. Huh? Hips are damaged. All that running, all that um, sparring takes its toll. You know, we are strong. But we were, we were strong in our youth. And we have to keep on appearing to be uh, solid and strong. But we're not. We become fragile because, you know, you have a lifespan. And that 80, 90 uh, years, 100 years, you know, you know, you know, perhaps my knees, again, are 85, 90 years old. Wear and tear. That damage, those brain cells, you know. And I'm not saying anything in the negative about boxing. I don't just like this. I love it. I am in love with boxing, this art, this craft, you know. But we suffer in silence. So, yeah, you know, for, you, for those of you listening to this uh, uh, interview or this podcast or this, this uh, broadcast, yeah, this broadcast, you know, we need help. So, you know, hit up this channel and, uh, and let's, start, let's start making some uh, noise about this because I'm sure, you know, promoters, certainly I'm sure Al or PBC will get behind it. Why wouldn't Top Rank get behind it? Why wouldn't Golden Boy get behind it? Why wouldn't Matchroom get behind it? You know? There is a fighter called Kirkland Lang. Lang. Look, look, up, look up this guy. He fought Roberto Duran and beat him. Okay? You know, he was... Uh, he is a Jamaican. You know, they're destitute. They're in the street. They're talking to themselves. The mental health is... It's tragic. We need help. <laughs>